The following presentation was produced by the Buddhist Society of Victoria. Please visit our website at bsv.net.au. Good morning to everyone, and this is Ajahn Nisarano welcoming you to this live streaming from Newbury Buddhist Monastery this morning, a very beautiful morning. Um, after, I am only going to do the short memorial service for uh, the uh, Sydney Hill who passed away last Tuesday. The purpose of today is uh, uh, to remember um, and to share merit with Sydney Hill who passed away last Tuesday, Melbourne Cup Day, <laughs> aged around 90. And uh, the BSV, some of you will have read the BSV weekly email which had an obituary for uh, Sydney. And the purpose of this uh, short memorial service is really to express our deepest sympathy for with Sydney's family at the passing away of Sydney. And to, to emphasise this is something, this, we're all in the same boat with old age sickness and death. And it's always a reminder for us and it's a part of the Buddhist practice. And I'd love, we'd particularly like to thank Francis Hill, this is Sydney's son, who actually informed us about his father's death and gave us some more information. But the purpose of this too is to, as always with memorial service, is to pay respects and honour the uh, contribution of the person, in this case Sydney Mill Hill, as one of the founders of the BSV. And uh, the we will be remembering his contribution and, and helping us start the BSV. And of course, it's very easy to uh, to think, to, uh, that to realise really, that without the founders, would there be a BSV, a Buddhist Society of Victoria? Without uh, people like Stanley Hill and the other four founders, would there be Newbury Buddhist Monastery? Would there be the city centre, Buddha Loka? And the, another part of this, of course, was... Uh, part of how we pay uh, respects to a person and honour their memory is by expressing our gratitude to Sydney for his part in uh, his part, the part he played in founding the Buddhist Society of Victoria. And we call this gratitude or thankfulness uh, katanyuta. And it's an it's a, a, a emotional quality, a wholesome quality of the mind, the heart that the Buddha greatly praised. And as Ajahn Brahm calls it, it's free happiness. <laughs> so it's something we can all develop. And the Buddha, of course, said, a person that is grateful is a very rare in the world. And we all know that. But another purpose of this uh, memorial uh, service, of course, is to dedicate merit to Sydney uh, and so that for, his, for a good rebirth, for his new life. And, of course, he's made enormous a good karma by helping establish the Buddhist society. And, and finally, to wish him a good rebirth, wherever he takes rebirth, and that it be a life with uh, enough necessities of life that will be abundant, that it will be a peaceful life, a happy life, and a, a rebirth where he can continue you know, his practice of the Buddha's path to enlightenment. So that's the purpose of it. And I'd just like to... Uh, mention now the first photo I'll bring up actually of the founders of the Buddhist Society. The photo that you can see on the screen shows some of the founding uh, members of the Buddhist Society of Victoria at another gathering actually um, and there's four of them there. And the, in Standing in the back row on the right hand side is Len Henderson sitting at the left of the those those that are sitting is uh, Fred Whittle, who I knew, and sitting on the right, uh, sitting in the middle, is of course Len Bullen, who was the uh, main uh, instrumental in setting up the, the Buddhist Society of Victoria, and then on the right, Les Oates. In this photo, there is no Sydney Hill yet, <laughs> but we will talk about, uh, we will move on to him in a minute. At that meeting on the 18th of April in 1953, they decided to form this Buddhist Society of Victoria. And Sidney Len uh, Bullen, he was the president, and Sidney was the secretary. 
But their first public meeting wasn't until 17th of October 1953, and that's when Les Oates joined in, and he was quite a catalyst. So you can see there the four, four early members of the Buddhist Society of Victoria. And uh, Len Bullen, he passed away in 1984 at 76. Les Oates passed away in 16, 16th of November 2013, not so long ago. And Len Henderson, still alive, and Sydney Hill just passed away last week. And Fred Whittle, he passed away on the 20th of September 1995. So I'd like to now move on to um, the life of Sydney Hill. So in a minute we'll be showing a photo of Sydney Hill uh, as he was then in the 1950s. There we are, I think you can see the photo. We don't have a lot of information about Sydney's life, so please forgive the family particularly, who may be watching this, I hope they are. Please forgive any inaccuracies. And I'm very thankful to the nuns here at Newbury Buddhist Monastery for the information and photos they, they found, which are quite amazing they did. He, Sydney was born around 1930, and uh, perhaps in 1930, and in 1953, as I mentioned, he helped found the BSV. And he was one of the active members. He and Leonard Bullen were very much active. And in 1954, he went to Burma for the sixth great um, Buddhist council, which was in Burma. And he made contact with the Cam Cambodian delegation, uh, who were very friendly and they invited him to come to Cambodia. And so the following year, he went to Cambodia and he ordained as a Buddhist monk in August 1955. And it's very interesting that uh, Francis uh, Hill, Sydney's son, has a photo of his father in a monk's robe in his passport, uh, in the passport that he had at that time. So uh, he... Uh, and I know from Paul Crouch's book about uh, um, uh, B Buddhism in Australia, the history of Buddhism in Australia, that uh, he had a very interesting time in Cambodia. And he was a great curiosity and, and evidently felt like he was a sideshow event <laughs> for many people who were coming to see him. And he was also asked to uh, teach 600 monks English, which is a bit of a daunting task, but... Uh, which he wasn't impressed with very much. And after about a year, he he came back to Australia and disrobed. He returned to lay life, I think, in 1956. And uh, Paul Croucher says he was probably the first verifiable Australian to become a Buddhist monk. I'm not sure about that because it could be others earlier, but not verified, perhaps. We don't know much of... Uh, Sydney's life after 1956, but we know he had a family, and of course we've been in contact with his son Francis. And I'd just like to share some of the comments that uh, Paul Croucher makes in his History of Buddhism. He said that uh, Sydney was a very down-to-earth character, and that he was very much his own man, which indicates to me that he was quite... Um, uh, quite an individual and quite independent. That's probably what you'd say, independent. And he makes this lovely comment, I think, anyway. He says, unlike many Australian Buddhists today, he was not in the least embarrassed about his cultural background and thought there was, thought there was nothing at all incongruous about his mother sending him Collingwood's football scores each week. This is probably as a monk. <laughs> Sid Hill has remained a convinced Buddhist, and he was still alive when this book was written, despite having nothing in, to do with Buddhist organisations or Buddhist societies. So, um, In May, two years ago, in May 2018, one of the monks from the, the Buddhist Society of Victoria, Ajahn Katapunya, who was staying there then, visited Sydney and Evany had a very lovely meeting with him. He, Sydney took the three refuges and the five precepts, which is the defining thing for becoming for being a Buddhist, and they discussed Dhamma. So this was uh, this was the last contact that we had with uh, Sid, uh, with Sydney, and Yasmin and Frank drove uh, Venu Ajahn Katapunya there. So, and now we'd just like to show a photo of uh, Buddha Loka, and he, and followed that by a Sangha at uh, Newbury. This is just to give an idea of, you know, the way the Buddhist society developed from 1953 to spread Dhamma 
to provide meditation retreats and to affect the lives of many people. And uh, it, it, to do that, it had a city centre in Mary Street, which eventually in the 1990s, they moved to East Malvern, Buddha Loka Centre. And I, can, I think you can see a photo of that now. And also they were established uh, in 2014, the Newbury Buddhist Monastery. And uh, then this has fostered the growth of a bhikkhuni sangha. This is the uh, fully ordained nuns in the Theravada Buddhist tradition. And of course, it's got the monks as well. It's the fourfold community we call monks, nuns, laymen, laywomen. So now that's the, to give a, give a sort of a, a perspective of what has been achieved and what Stanley contributed, uh, Sydney contributed to. So now I'd like to chant, do some chanting, uh, some traditional Buddhist chanting that we do when someone has passed away. And this chant actually is, um, was chanted when the Buddha passed away, but he used to, he had spoken it before he'd passed away too in various contexts. And I'll give you the meaning in English and then chant it in, in uh, the Pali language, the language that the Buddhist texts are in. It, the meaning is, impermanent indeed are all conditioned things. This is whatever comes from a cause. They arise and decay. That is their nature. Having arisen, they cease. And the going out of them is bliss. So that's the meaning of it. It's all about impermanence and causes, causes and conditions. So now I will chant that in uh, the way we do at funerals, in Buddhist, uh, Buddhist funerals. Anicca vata sankhara upada vaya damino upajitva nirujanti te sangvopasamo sukho Anicca vata sankhara upada vaya damino upajitva nirujanti te sangvopasamo sukho Anicca vata sankhara upada vaya damino upajitva nirujanti te sangvopasamo sukho so and now we'll do the I'll do the chant for sharing of uh, sharing merit. This is called this. The meaning of this chant is this is for my relatives. May my relatives be happy. We do this three times too. Everything three times usually. Idang bo nyati nang ho tu suki ta hon tu nyata yo. Idang bo nyati nang ho tu suki ta hon tu nyata yo. Idang bo nyati nang ho tu suki ta hon tu nyata yo. And now just to finish off with another chant in English, so this will be very good, I think meaningful. May you abide in well-being, in freedom from affliction, in freedom from hostility, in freedom from ill will, in freedom from anxiety, and may you maintain well-being in yourself, May you abide in well-being, in freedom from affliction, in freedom from hostility, in freedom from your will, in freedom from anxiety, and may you maintain well-being in yourself. Just like to conclude by thanking, a big thank you to Sydney, and in Buddhism, we often say sadhu. That's what, and what that means for uh, um, uh, Sydney's relative uh, family is well done, well done. And we'd like to say very well done for Sydney, and may he have a good rebirth, a happy rebirth, wherever he takes rebirth, and that possibility to keep practicing a path that leads to enlightenment and purity. And to thank all of you for participating or watching uh, this memorial service, and particularly to thank the nuns at Newbury Buddhist